Welcome back, friends of the shop. I was putting away my tools and looking at my tool cart, and I thought this might be an interesting video because the contents of this tool cart are kind of the culmination of 20 years of the needs of a professional homeowner. And the interesting thing about it is the tool set kind of builds itself. This being my main cart that I roll around and I'll take it outside, I'll, you know, I take it to my work so I'm not back and forth with a toolbox. I don't like working out of drawer toolboxes. I think it was Adam Savage said that toolboxes are the place where tools go to die. <laughs> when you have something you don't use very often or a specialty tool, it seems to go there and uh, when you don't know what else to do with it. But this is interesting because in, in this cart are the contents that I have, uh, that, that I have been able to do probably 90% of all jobs in the shop with and it has actually kind of filled itself. If I put things in here that I thought I needed, uh, they are long since gone. And what is in here is actually completely distilled down to the absolute essentials. And I thought it might be fun to go through this and, and to explain you know, why I have in here what I have. Um, and for my own self, it was kind of, just kind of an interesting study. So let's jump into it. You guys like long videos? We're gonna get into it. All right, so let's start with, <laughs> with <laughs> the socket sockets and ratchets so I only use pretty much three eighths drive I've got the quarters and I've got the halves and the three quarters but those live in the toolbox the three eighths size is just about the perfect size uh, so we'll start with that so I mean your bread and butter are your ratchets right and I see I have two ratchets actually I have three ratchets in here I do have a quarter inch drive ratchet uh, these are the long handled snap-on if I were you know, I've never regretted buying snap-on tools and the things that are, are, are uh, your bread and butter, you know, your socket set, I think it's well justified to buy it. They, I, I, as I, I've never regretted buying them and every single time I grab one, it gives me, absolutely gives me the fizz and gives me the pleasure. And the thing you'll find with the snap-on tools and the essential ones is that when you're up underneath uh, standing on your head and you've got one chance to get that bolt loose, they come through for you. And the fact that they have the off and on on the back, I know it's a silly thing, but I don't know. I still look at it. <laughs> still, <laughs> especially when you're, you're backwards, you know, you can look at it. I mean, it's just a handy. And I, I like these long ones. Um, I have, I have a, a three, well, this is a little quarter inch snap on with a swivel head on it, but I don't run any of the quarter inch drive sockets in there, but I look like I have an adapter on here for the three eight socket, because that's, um, and I'll put it on there if I need sort of. But the reason why I have two, I think, is because I like to, sometimes you don't want to just keep changing sockets. If you're working with a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter, you can set it up or one with an extension, but I mean, that's really where it's at. So for the, the ratchet type of things right here, I've got these, Looks like I got about a 12 inch snap on extension, another 12 inch snap on extension, a eight inch extension. And I guess that pretty well, that pretty well rounds it out. Now there is one thing, of course I got the big snap on breaker bar. You know, when you just, when you put the hug a bug on stuff and you just can't quite get it or you don't want to break your ratchet with something that's really gnarly, you go with the old flex handle right there. And this is a half inch drive but I've got the impact adapter to the three eighths because I just, I don't like to use the half inch sockets. You know, professional homeowners got no business with half inch sockets. You can go up to one inch uh, and that's gonna take care of most of your needs right there. But that, oh, and the best part. Sadly, I have tried and tried and tried. Every time I show this tool on videos, uh, lots of guys ask about it. And this is an extension with a handle on it. This is probably one of the best things that Snap-on ever made right there. And I, I, I don't think they make it anymore. I have looked and looked and looked. And if you can find that for me, I found a short one, but the short one's no good. This is the one you want because when you're done, you know, when you break something loose, you can flip this off and you got a nice handle on there and you can turn it and use it for a nut driver. It's absolutely the best. We'll lay this stuff out here. Sockets. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you have to have two sets. You've got to have a metric and a standard and my sockets are <clears throat> excuse me are also snap on of course 10 millimeters missing uh, if you buy uh, when you buy your socket set just go ahead and buy 10 10 10 millimeters uh, because for some reason uh, they'll always be gone deep and shallow 
Now, I bought uh, these. These are the semi-deep versus the long deep here. I don't know why I bought those. I guess I thought they were cool when I was in the Snap-on truck, but I noticed that I have replaced the 13 millimeter with a long one because it's just not enough sometimes, but I've never found that to be a problem. Eight millimeter up to 21 millimeter and quarter inch up to one inch, deep and shallow, metric and standard are pretty well going to cover, as I said, 90% of all of your work. How about some hammers? So I've got three hammers in here. I mean, your bread and butter is your a ball peen hammer. Um, I don't know how many ounces this is. What's it say on there? I had, this is my new one, actually. The old one I bought, goodness, 20 years ago or so. It finally gave up the ghost. It was orange, and uh, I actually found a finally had found a Snap-on guy, uh, and they replaced it with this one right here. But these are shop built. You can hear that, which uh, keeps them from bouncing. But I mean, that really is your bread and butter. I have the big one, you know, great big one, you know, that's the mate to this one. Um, but I keep that in the tractor for just bashing pins and stuff. But for most work for beating on stuff, this seems to be adequate. I also use a brass hammer a lot. This is, these are both snap-on. Brass, is, as we know, is softer than steel. And if you're pounding on something, you're trying to get something off of a shaft that you don't want to damage and you don't want to mar, the brass is a sacrificial piece. And it's got a lot of weight to it. Is this? Shot filled? I don't think so. Uh, but that's, that's lasted a long time. I mean, I've had that, goodness, I've had that one for over 20 years. I'm sparing with it. I don't just beat on anything because it's, it's an expensive tool. But if you want to beat on something without breaking it, um, that's, a, that's a good way to go. And then a shot filled, <clears throat> plastic, a rubber. If you really want to be gentle and not mar stuff, um, these are worth their weight in gold. And this is also shot filled. But these are the three hammers. I mean, these are really my go-to hammers. Uh, and I don't rarely need anything outside of that unless I'm doing heavy work on equipment, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see, I got some pliers in here. I got my Knipex. Uh, I don't know if these are Cobras or whatever, bolt, bolt rounders. Um, these are pretty well essential. I, you grab these whenever you're, so you got a nut spinning or something on the back, you typically just grab these because they'll fit every size and they're just handy as a pocket and a shirt. And I got two pair of the old school ones right there, a big set snap on and a, and a small one. Um, and those are just absolutely essential. But as far as pliers go, these are the three that I seem to always have in my kit. You got to have a good pair of uh, side cutters, uh, cutters. My actually I had, these are the new ones I got. These also the snap on guy replaced. Uh, these are a lot better than the old ones I had. But even those guys, I mean, they lasted forever, and I just use them indefinitely. But these are absolutely essential. Good pair of side cutters, cutting wires, cutting small bolts, cutting zip ties, all those little things you need to cut, you know, vacuum lines, hoses, uh, you name it. you got to have a good pair of high-quality side cutters. These are the, about the best ones I think I've ever used. Screwdrivers. I can see my primary oh, also... As far as the sockets go, I have that nut driver I was telling you about. I've got a quarter inch dry version of that as well. And I've got a adapter from quarter to three eighths on here so I don't have to fool around with going to my toolbox and getting quarter inch drive sockets. I'll just, I can adapt up and use one of the smaller ones. And having this little head like that to get in those tight spots is always handy. Not my favorite for a primary ratchet to have this thing swiveling around because they do get loose and wear out over time. Um, but they're excellent. And the plastic handles, I've always wanted a snap-on ratchet with that plastic handle on it. I've never bought one, but I, I like that. I, I like that. I li and I don't like the new handle as well as I like the old one. because It just seems like the old one it gets all dirty and, and kind of ganky looking. You can see right there. It is better, that triangle shape. You can hold on to it better. It's not near as slippery. I don't know. I, I just kind of like the old ones. I'm kind of partial to those. Uh, so as far as kind of, there are a few special, I don't know, it used to be specialty. I don't think it's specialty so much anymore, but a full set of Torx. And I'm going to have to put my readers on here. These are in 3 8 drive. <clears throat> These are snap-on. And this case is excellent because you can just grab, you never will grab the right size when you go in there. It'll always be too big or too small. And this is uh, magnetic, and you can stick it on stuff. And you've got your whole set right here. And I got 
these are snap on from T55 down to the T27. And then I've got the smaller ones and snap on with the, on the dedicated handles that I keep up on the shop bench. But usually if I'm working on the bench, I'm doing some smaller stuff that, um, but this, a good set of Torx is, uh, is what you're gonna want in your kit like that. Cause it seems to be more and more of those on, on tools and such. I've got two full sets of um, Allens. These are sna yeah, Snap-on or Blue Point. One in standard and one in metric. And this is essential. I, I would actually, I, you could make the argument, it would be nice to have a set like this uh, with the sockets that was in standard and metric. Um, but I just don't use them all that often. You don't come across them. I mean, you run across a grub screw, different things. But I have my bond house, whatever the T handles up on the bench, which is what I'm primarily going to use when I'm working in, on household items and fixing things. But these two sets right here, and I really like, if you look on the end of there, you'll see that they've got a ball end on them. That's important. I would, whatever you buy, buy the ones with a ball end on there because you can get some deflection. You can't always get, you know, straight on, on the Allens. It seems like the Allens are always in a tight spot and you can, you can bend just enough sometimes with that ball on there uh, to get that off at an angle. And it, it's a huge help. And these go from 10 millimeter to 1.5 on this set and then uh, 3 8 down to um, 0 0.050. And, and these are a good set right here. Got, got your Allens. Uh, screwdrivers, <clears throat> your primary, your primary screwdriver is going to be your number two Phillips um, snap-on. If, if you if you're buying, uh, get different color handles for your Phillips and your standards because if when you put the putting them in like I do, I just made this little sheet metal deal that hangs on the side and drilled a bunch of holes on it for all my commonly used screwdriver type of things. Uh, you can look at them and see at a glance. I know that the blues are standard and the blacks, um, I think that's what I did, the blacks were, are the, uh, the Phillips. But this is your go-to, man. I mean, scraping and poking and prying. Th this, this screwdriver right here is probably one of the most useful shapes and designs uh, of all tools I've ever used. And the, the snap-on screwdrivers are super excellent because they've got that, that nut on there. So if you've got something that's really tight, like your Phillips on there, and you can't get enough torque on that guy, you can put your wrench on it and you can turn it like that. You don't always use it, but when you need it, you need it. And that is, um, Snap-on makes really, really good screwdrivers. Snap-on screwdrivers last, seem to last longer and stay sharper than any of the other screwdrivers that I've had. I keep this big old tapered punch in here because it seems like I'm always using it uh, like to, to line stuff up when you're trying to get bolts like through a lower control arm or you're just having trouble, uh, it seems, or you're driving pins. It's a good size. You take these two guys right here, this hammer and punch, and you, I just use it all the time. This is just an old school one here. I, I think this one might even be homemade, but I think my granddad made this one. Uh, this was in his tool kit, uh, and he had it in his cart as well. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty old, but man, oh man, I have used that so many times. And the tapered is important because it gives you the ability to, to it comes back out easier than just a straight cut and, and you, uh, just handy, 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 handy. And it's long enough where you can get through on long things. You know, some of those control arms and bushings and things are, are pretty good size, uh, but that's, that's pretty important to have. I guess that's why it's in there. <clears throat> just, I've got a... A putty knife or scraper. I use this for scraping off goo, uh, scraping off stickers, scraping off whatever, uh, gaskets, um, RVT, uh, having a scraper that you can scrape around in this, this size, that, what is that, that one inch? It seems to be about perfect. Just an inch and a, inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter scraper. And this is an old, I mean, I've had this one forever. I don't know how many times I've sharpened it, but man, th this is a handy thing to have. Scraping grease, whatever you need. Um, Sharpies, choose Sharpies all the time. I've, silver and black. Uh, I, li I like the silver ones because if you have a dark surface, sometimes the silver shows up a little bit better than the black. 
These little magnet doohickeys, one of my subscribers started manufacturing these years ago and he sent me a couple of them and I covet them. Uh, uh, and I haven't been able to find him or I don't even know if he's still making them. But it's the magnet slips on the cap and you can stick it anywhere. So when you're working on stuff and you seem to never lose your Sharpies, you get one without the magnet and it's, you never know where it's at. But these don't seem to walk off and they are the handiest thing. But Sharpies, I must use them a lot because I got three of them in here. I've got uh, th six box end wrenches up here and in the most common sizes. And these are, these are swivel head, blue point, or snap on, basically the same thing. You know, your gear wrench, ratcheting style wrenches and in the most common sizes. Your three most common sizes that as a professional homeowner you're probably going to use is going to be your 8, 10, and 13 millimeter. Obviously, because that's the only, I never have bought a set of these because they were kind of expensive and they're, I don't use them all the time. They're a little bit niche, but man, when you need them, you need them. And when you get that ratchet with that swivel head on there and your most common sizes, these are handy and can really speed up a job, especially if you don't have an impact wrench handy. So on this SA, or on the metric side, it's the 8, 10, and 13. And then I have the same thing here without the swivel heads, which are not as handy in the half 9 16 and 7 16 sizes. And those you grab a lot right there and, and I have them up in the top drawer here so that tells me that they must be pretty darn essential. I've got a <clears throat> great big snap-on screwdriver. This seems to be, I, I use this thing, I don't know that I've ever taken a screw out with it but I sure have pried a lot of stuff off and pounded on it and you know getting the gasket loose off of an oil pan, just a million different things. This is something I use a lot and I really like the square. Now, I think I have used this for big screws and stuff because I know I've put wrenches on this a lot. I'm surprised it's not broke or bent, but Snap-on makes, they make good tools, no doubt about it. But this is a big old screwdriver and handy. Also, if you're, granddad, I remember, he, if you were listening for, uh, it, you can listen if, if you've got like a, um, a lifter rattling or something, you can, I put my ear to this and he taught me that trick and you can put it down the engine and you can hear, you can hear where problems are coming from and I have used it that way too, but not very often. And then all I've got in here are just the two socket sets, uh, which you've seen. A couple of tape measures, keep tape measures on here. I'm always grabbing for those. You're going to need two or three of those because they're always going to be running off. They're almost as bad as a, as a 10 millimeter socket. And you, did you notice that my 10 millimeter is missing? <laughs> The 10 and the 13. <laughs> I think, oh, the 13's on the ratchet there. All right, let's go over here to the screwdrivers. <clears throat> One of my favorite tools, and I think I I bought these originally from my Jeep parts business when I we were disassembling um, Jeeps. This is called a panel tool, and I think it was designed to to take get behind the clips and door panels and things. But I found them to be almost uh, one of the most valuable tools I've ever ever owned. I guess that's why I have two of them uh, for, for those, all those prying ta tasks when you're trying to pry on stuff. And what I like about these is, is they're, they're not very sharp and they're rounded. How many times I have taken the old, num the old regular flat blade screwdriver and jabbed that into the meat of my hand because it's very sharp. I don't grab this and do that anymore. If I got something where that might slip and get me, uh, I stay away from that. I've done that way too many times. And these guys, it still hurts, but it doesn't seem to do near the damage. And that little bend on there that it has, it seems to be just perfect to give you lots of purchase and leverage. It's the handiest thing. I've broken a couple of them, but these are the business. I, I use them all the time. You know, you get a, a, a bolt that's something spinning on there. You need to put some back pressure on it with an impact. You know, you can get it underneath there. I've used two of them to pry stuff up. It's one of my favorite tools. This is actually the first YouTube video that I made was on this because it, it was, it's such a handy tool and so essential. I, I just grab it almost daily. Very handy. Handy tool to have. We got a regular flat blade, large size snap-on screwdriver. Um, I don't use that one too often. You can tell this is probably 30, 30 years old or so and it just doesn't have very much wear. I, I have replaced it. Looks like it's got a new replacement on there. But a big regular. 
this is something I bought for, a, I think, one job that had a screw clear down in the middle of nowhere somewhere, uh, and I needed it. And I don't know why it's in my kit here other than uh, just filling up a hole, but I don't use that one very often. But I do use this one. This is a number two. This is a number two, but it's longer. And sometimes you need that extra length. Yeah, here we go. These are the, th this is your bread and butter right here for your number two. And on second thought, just thinking about it, I, may, I think I do prefer this rubber handle because with the triangle, sh is it the triangle shape on it? You, you can hold this, you can put a lot of force on this. It, that triangle shape is near perfect and it's got a good rubber coating on it and it gives you a good grip, especially when your hands get greasy or this one, not so much. I think maybe I just like the looks of these better because they maybe they just stay cleaner, look nicer, and I always felt like I could pound on them a little bit better. But both are good. I'm, I don't know that it, it's not a big deal. And then I've got a, a long regular one too. And I don't use this one that often, but a fair amount, enough, enough where I'd keep it in my kit. And I, I guess maybe I color-coded those two green handles so I knew which one was which. So I knew that they, those were the long screwdrivers. I got two stubbies, number two and a flat blade. Sometimes this is the only tool to get the job done, but more times than not, your 10 millimeter is going to be missing, your 13 millimeter is going to be missing, and your Phillips screwdriver is going to be missing. And I can't tell you how many times I needed a screwdriver and I needed it now, and I go to look in my box and I didn't put it back and it's gone, or someone borrowed it and I resorted to these. And they're hateful, miserable little things to use because you can't get any purchase on them, but they're always there. Uh, because no one's going to take this and use it because it's such a miserable, t <laughs> miserable tool. But when you need it, you need it. And um, it's always kind of a nice backup because it's always going to be there. <clears throat> this is my granddad's. When I went, went through his tools when he passed away, my granddad was a Ford mechanic uh, his whole life, a transmission mechanic. And, and that's where I learned to work on cars. And when I was a little kid, I started working in his garage when I was just tiny. And we, um, he worked for Ford, worked at a dealership, and did pretty much everything, you know, from World War II up to the time he retired. Uh, but he would take on side jobs on the weekends and make a little bit extra money, and I would help him. And we would rebuild. He'd only work on Fords, uh, but we'd rebuild C4s and C6 automatic transmissions, and we'd do brakes and front ends and ball joints for friends and family and, you know, just word of mouth and that sort of thing. And when I went through his stuff, he had, he must have had half a dozen of these, um, just basically an ice pick. Uh, and I can't really say any particular job that I use it for, but it's, it's very similar to the punch, but for smaller, where you just need to get in and, and line stuff up, and you just need to jab stuff or poke stuff. Uh, it's just ha a handy thing to have. Um, and he must have used them a lot, because he had a whole bunch of these, and I seem to keep one around, and I don't use it very often, but I, I, actually I do. I do grab this, this quite a bit, but this was his, and man, I think I got one up there too, and so it's kind of an ice pick thing is, is handy. This is a snap-on, I don't even know what they call it, but this is really, really handy um, for, I, I dig out O-rings. Whenever you got something that's tough or you, you, I don't, you just need to get in and root around and, and get something off or dig at something or poke something at a weird angle, this is the handiest little tool right here. I actually have two of these. I've got a, one with an orange handle, one with a black handle, and I, I bought both these from the snap-on guy. I guess I must have used them a lot back in the Jeep days, and I still do. It seems that this thing is in my hand all the time, and orange handle's kind of nice. I, I think at a time I tried to color coordinate the handles so that when I look down, and when I'm working, I look down, I could just see it and grab it and, and know what it was. But I don't even know what this is for or what it's called, but it's, uh, it's a pretty essential, essential tool. Speaking of essential, uh, a little snap-on O-ring tool, a little 90-degree pick. Again, it's another thing I use all the time. I had some troll run in and give me a hard time about, that's not an O-ring pick. It is an O-ring pick. That's everyone that I've known's ever called it, but i scratching on stuff and, and you know trying to clean the grease off of things to read serial numbers for parts or digging O-rings or just a million different things. That's a handy little guy right there. I've got a couple of these as well, and that's a, that's a good deal right there. 
We got a number three Phillips for the rare occasions you run across a little bit bigger one. Rarely, this is probably the most, the least used tool in the kit, but when you need it, you need it. You know, you it's uh, so it's there. I guess I just keep a pretty well a pretty well full set of screwdrivers. Here on the front, uh, a little a quarter inch impact driver. Um, having this with the clip on it is, you, I use it all the time, um, just essential. I've got a three eighths adapter on there. Make sure you buy several of these because these impact wrenches are pretty strong and, and you'll break them at the worst moment when you need it. And I usually have one or two of these floating around thrown in the top there, but these, um, you can put all your sockets on, right? It gives you your, your impact and that's a, that's a handy deal. Now this, these are kind of light duty. They don't have the torque of a proper impact wrench. You know, if you're, I, I know that there's better ones out there. I, I don't, I don't have one of those yet, but when I'm, if I'm doing like brakes and I'm doing like really heavy work, I, I'm not a production shop. And if I was, I would probably invest in a Hilti or a Milwaukee, a, a dedicated three eighths and half inch drive impact wrench. When I was um, doing, you know, mechanic and work professionally, like, you know, my, my parts business, I had snap on. A cordless three eighths and, and half inch and goodness they were expensive. I remember I remember <laughs> I remember all of the major snap-on purchases in that tool truck like I was there because at the time I didn't have very much money and it was blood money but I needed the tools and I was running a shop and I, I you, when you need them you need them but goodness the two are, two of them that I really remember are these two <laughs> I don't remember this is a 3 8 MG31 snap-on regular air impact wrench. I love the 3 8 The half, my granddad always used a half inch. He had a half inch, then he used CP, Chicago pneumatic. That's when it used to be good. I don't think it's good anymore. Uh, and I, but I still have his CP half inch impact wrench. And when I get lug nuts or things that will not come off with this guy right here, I go and I get granddad's old CP. It's over there in the toolbox. It's a great, it, it, I mean, multi-generational tools. And you can only imagine, he probably paid a month's wages for this stupid thing, but I still have it today and it still works. And here's the thing is with these cordless tools, the convenience is amazing to be able to grab this and not have to hunt down an air hose and to be able to take it outside of your shop and, and to do things is it's invaluable but they're disposable and they're not going to last all that long whereas you know how long ago did i buy this like 25 years ago used it professionally for a decade and still in perfect condition and it'll probably hand it down to jack it's a lifetime investment tool and that's the difference between the air, you know, your air versus your pneumatic, or your pneumatic versus your electric, is that this will, I mean, I've been through a dozen of these things, get a couple years out of them, but it's worth it. It's worth it for the convenience. But if I'm working on my car and I'm working in the shop or trucks, I'll get the air hose out and there's nothing like the longevity of these guys. And goodness, I remember the blood money it took to buy this thing too, an air ratchet. I bought this one off the Snap-on truck as well. That's old school right there. That'll, that'll twist your arm off. That's a powerful ratchet. But I found that, especially when you're working underneath, you just, this is too big. You can't get it in those tight spots. And sometimes the air ratchet is the only tool. It's a hateful, miserable thing to use and it's a wrist breaker. But when you need it, you need it. And again, the cordless versions of these, I know out are, are pretty good. I've seen some good reviews on them, but again, the convenience is nice, but they're gonna be are you going to have it in 25, 30 years? Is your grandson going to use it? Um, no, but uh, most likely you will have these. Uh, pretty amazing tools, but I keep those in there. But I primarily use the, the cordless. Downstairs, we got downstairs. Uh, two sets of wrenches, metric and standard, of course, and. I don't know, I haven't really found any need uh, for anything outside of the eight millimeter to 22 millimeter. And these are, I mean, snap on these flank drives, whatever, I, mean, I bought these off the truck. It looks like I lost my eight millimeter. Got a power, power drive in there, but um, 
Good wrenches, a good set of wrenches, essential, metric and standard. On the metric side, is that the metric side? Yeah, that's the metric side. So 8 to 22 millimeter. And on the standard side, I have a full set of uh, snap-on quarter inch to one inch. I must, when I bought this set, it only went up to one inch. And there were some in instances on, I think, doing some, some suspension work that I needed some bigger tools. And then I've got, you know, some old school stuff, Cornwell. Um, I don't remember that brand. Williams. This is old. These are my granddad's, I believe. Yeah, that's, I don't even know if that brand's still around anymore where I've needed to go up to inch and, inch and a quarter. And I, I use those, I, I've used those quite often. It seems like I've helped a lot of my buddies do, you know, those of the own Dodges and you're always rebuilding their front ends because they uh, build terrible front suspensions or, or not heavy enough to deal with that big diesel. It seems that I, that I do grab those quite, quite often uh, that you pretty well have to have them because if you get a bolt, get bolts that big up into inch and a quarter and such, you know, your, your bolt rounder, your big crescent wrenches, uh, you know, they just don't get it done. Because usually you're going to have to put a hammer on this thing and some heat and beat on it with a sledgehammer. And uh, you've got to have it. You've got to have it. And then just to round everything out, as I said, I don't like to work out of toolboxes. Um, I don't know what it is about toolboxes, but my box over there has about eight or nine drawers, seven, eight, nine drawers. And even though I've organized it and I know my pliers are here and here, when I go to reach something, it seems I have to open all the drawers to find it. <laughs> I don't know if I just haven't committed it to memory. Uh, and I hate, hate working out of a toolbox. Now, if you're working in a shop and you've got work, a bunch of fellow Philistine co-workers that are borrowing and stealing your tools, you've got no choice. You've got to lock all that stuff up. But if you're working in your own shop and you don't have to worry about that so much working out of a cart like this is the handiest thing because everything's open and, and you can grab it and it's not so big that you can't easily roll it around and the drawers are not I've had I've grabbed my toolboxes before my lower roll arounds and grabbed them to pull them around to work on something and all the drawers come out and the toolbox fall over and bend all the drawers and ruin a, a, a $2,000 toolbox the tool cart and this is just a blue point blue point is it's kind of like Snap-on. They're a parent. I don't know the relationship. I mean, it's the same company, I believe. And sometimes you'd be on a truck and you'd see Blue Point. Sometimes you'd see Snap-on. Granddad always told me Blue Point was a little cheaper back in the day, or maybe built down to a budget. But I've not found them to be lacking in quality. Um, sometimes that's the only thing available. But I don't really know what that relationship is. But Blue Point, Snap-on, either one. I like it. But this is a Blue Point cart and it's just perfect, good size. I put a piece of carpet in the top because I don't like tools rattling around on metal. Uh, it, just, it bothers me, so I put a little piece of indoor-outdoor carpet on there, and uh, it makes me happy. And that's the kit. I mean, that's, this is not something that I put together for a video or thought, you know, these might be handy. This is what has, this is what, the, the cream has separated and, and risen to the top, and th these are the things that the professional homeowner <laughs> <laughs> can do probably 90% of all the work uh, that you're going to come across. And if you had this set or something similar to it, uh, you would be in, in pretty good pretty good shape. There's a lot more to it than that. I mean, there's vices and specialty tools and different things a guy's going to need, obviously. But that will go over in the, in the toolbox for something you might use every three or four years. The, this is the everyday uh, toolkit. Now, I also threw on here two things from my EDC because I always have it on me and that would be a knife and, and a flashlight. Um, when I was working, when I had my shops, you know, professionally, I had, I had dedicated lights, you know, n nice trouble lights and such. Uh, but for, for me, I always have this on me, right? A little Surefire EDC um, and my Benchmade knife. So I, I don't have those in here because they're, they're always within reach. Goodness. Oh, there's one last thing. Keep a roll of blue shop towels. That's it. That is the kit. <laughs> Thanks for, for watching. Uh, if you um, have uh, like to add things that you have in your kit that you've found to be essential uh, in day-to-day -day work that um, just make, make a big difference and make life easier, uh, I'd like to hear about that in the comments. Uh, let me know, and, and maybe I can. Um, I like I like to learn stuff too from guys with experience, and uh, that can make your life easier and 
help you out a little bit. Uh, it's nice to have this community where we can learn from each other. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please be careful. It's New Year's Eve. Don't get in any trouble tonight. Stay home if you can. We'll see you all on the next video.